today we're going to explore the concept of data analysis using various types of graphs. But before we begin, uh, before we begin, we need to understand the process of collecting data and ana uh, data analysis. Um, <clears throat> Also, the process of data analysis is also known as the four-step process of doing statistics. And the steps include, um, one, formulating a question, which is like clarifying the problem at hand. Um, step two is collecting the data. So after you formulate the question, you collect the data that correlates with the question. Um, step three is analyzing the data. So you take all the data that you did, see, like, plot it and analyze it and see what your results are, which leads to the fourth step, which is interpreting the um, results. <clears throat> now that we're familiar with the process, we're going to review the four most common types of graphs used in analyzing data. Um, however, keep in mind that these are not the only four used, it's just the four common types. First we have the bar graph, which looks like this, and it's used to compare data across categories. And then second you have a line graph, which is used to show progression over a period of time. And then you have a circle graph, which shows the percentage or the portion or the fraction of a whole. And then you also have a pictograph, which is used to compare data across categories using symbols. So this is really from, uh, really similar to a bar graph, but it's more used in the prim like the really primary grades um, for children who don't really do well with numbers and they're more um, visual. And then, although um, this is not necessarily one of the most common, um, we're going to also use the box and whisker plot, also known as the box plot, um, in addition to one of the graphs, uh, graphs mentioned just a while ago. Um, today we're gonna come up with a real world scenario and have a question that can be solved using the data. Um, in order to complete this activity, we have created an associated data set of 11 points, and we're gonna use a simple bar graph um, as well as more of a complex box and whisker plot. Um, based on the vertical alignment chart, the bar graph activity that we're going to do is second grade level, and then um, the box and whisker is more expected to be mastered by the sixth grade. And then our real world scenario is we as teachers need to be able to determine what the majority of our students um, score on any given assessment in order to adjust our instructions. So um, we have our data set, which is um, test scores from um, a given assessment, and uh, our question today is based on the graph for the majority of the class passing the assessment, passing being 70 or higher. Now that we have a general um, idea about data analysis, the types of graphs we're going to use, uh, we're going to start with the bar graph because it's the least complex and we're going to move to more complex. Okay, so since our question is, did the majority of the class pass, what we're going to do is take our grades and work on by letter grade. So since we're organizing by letter grade, and then that's what we're comparing is the grade, we're going to use the bar graph. So the first step for making a bar graph is to draw your axis. Organize these by letter grades. So we 
we are going to determine that A is going to be a 90 or above. And so we look at our grades and we have a 92. We have a 94. Counting those, we know that we have four students that scored an A. And now we're going to look for B. And B is going to be an 80 or above. So we go over here and we have an 80 30. So we have one student who scored a B. And C is going to be your 70s to 80s. So we look, we have a 72. 278. And we decided that anything under a 70 is going to be counted as an F. And so we have the low grade of a 22, a 54. It's also really important to emphasize, especially in the first one, that a 
There's five parts um, to a box and whisker plot, so that's our first step is to find all of these plots, or all of those parts of the um, graph. So the first thing we have to find is the median, which is simply the middle number of your whole set. And that's why it's so important to have it in order so you know exactly what falls in the middle because that would be all jumbled and it would be some random number. So um, the way to do this is just to count inward from each side. So you kind of go 101 and 22, 54, 100, 65, 94, 72, 92, <coughs> 78, 83. So we know that this, this 78 marks the middle of our data set. Um, so that is our median, which is also the second quartile, or Q2. And then we do the same thing to each of these sets. So we have to go and find um, the median of each side of the set which are the other two quartiles. Um, and it's important, again, not to, to include the first median that we found because it's already a part. So we have to look at the part that hasn't been used. So again, we count in from each side, 72, I mean, 22 and 78, 72, 54. Here's our median of this half of the um, data set, which is our uh, first quartile. And then over here, we count in again, and 94 is our third quartile, and then the um, highest and lowest numbers are our outliers. So we've got 101 and 22 for our outliers. Um, this could be used, teachers could use this obviously to track their students' grades and see where they fall, but this is also um, a good way to have students practice using the box and whisker plot um, because it is a good real world question that, that would be applicable to their lives. Um, so now that we have our five parts that we have circled on our original data set line, we are going to plot them. So we're going to start with um, our outliers. So we've got 22 all the way over here. And then we'll put it way over here. We've got 101. Now you can, if, there, if your students are just learning this, um, this type of graph, then they can um, have the number line be a part of it, but it, it's not necessary as long as they are proficient in this, um, this type of graph. But if they're having trouble, it'll help them with the visual. Uh, so we've got our outliers plotted, and then we need to plot our uh, three of the both, all three of our quartiles. So it's important to see, we've got a huge range here. So we need to be sure that our quartiles are numerically represented, so the value is represented clearly and visually. So we know that our median will start there. Halfway between these two would probably be 60. We're about there. So um, our median would be right about here at 78. So that's our median or our second quartile. And then in between um, 101 and 78 is our third quartile. <coughs> So we'll put that right here, and that's a 94, our third quartile. And then we've got 65 right around here for our first quartile. And then you connect your three quartiles into your box and draw your whiskers all the way out to your outliers. And um, this type of graph is more of a summary, so we don't once we just have the graph and we no longer have our um, data set, we don't know our oops, our extreme, our exact numbers. So on our bar graph, we could count exactly how many um, students got a 70 or above. But on this one, we know that our quartile two is um, half of our data set. So within each of these sections, we've got one section here, one section here, one here, and one here. There are equal numbers of um, scores. scores, thank you. Um, <laughs> so we know that here's half, and this was not included in our, in this half of it, it's, this is sort of the extra one, kind of, I guess you can think of it as a tiebreaker. And this, 
this tiebreaker got a 78. So we know that half of the data set at least got over a 78, and then our tiebreaker at um, 78 has pushed our total number of students who've gotten 70 or above to um, over half. So we know that with our 11 sets or our 11 scores, that at least six out of 11 have passed. So we know we can answer our question that at least half of our students have passed the majority. Okay, so in conclusion, our question was trying to see if the majority of students passed or failed. And to do this, we used a bar graph because it compares data and we counted the number of students with their different letter grades. And then we used the four different or five different parts of a box and whisker plot to see how the students were divided up and where the majority 